know I'm gonna catch hell from my window being dirty. <laughs> I get so busy and it, sometimes it just doesn't get cleaned and sometimes I forget I'm such a hurry all the darn time that I, I'll go get fuel somewhere and ah, I just gotta go, you know, and I'll jump in and head down the road and I'll get down there and go, why didn't you wash your window while you were there, dummy? But anyway, next fuel, we'll see, we got a half tank here, next fuel stop, we'll try to, need some sticky notes maybe, put it up there on the steering wheel or something, it says wash window. Anyway, we're heading down to this place called Shastina. And there's a strawberry grower that he's got his foundation plot down here in uh, Chastina, which the foundation plot is very, very important. Hey, there was an onion on the highway ran over. Still a lot of onion harvest going on in Tui Lake, onion trucks heading south. Anyway, uh, me and Daisy and Duke here are heading down there to do an emergency uh, clutch repair job. We got a new clutch in the back of the truck here. Uh, they've got a, uh-oh. We have a police man here off Tenant Road. Try to not hold the camera up to where, because they could probably technically give me a ticket. Almost like a cell phone ticket. Try to make it not so obvious that I'm having the camera up in the air. So anyway, um, what was I saying? We're gonna go down here. This uh, they're still they're they're gonna dig their uh, harvest their uh, foundation plot here pretty soon. Uh, and they're still irrigating it. So it's vitally important for the irrigation to be on right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's millions of dollars on the line right now, so you've got to get the water to it. Uh, anyway, they're heading down there because the clutch has failed on it. Uh, they called me the other day and I told Tomas, their mechanic, how to adjust it, and I said just adjust it until it cams over. It's, it's got a kind of like a, oh, what do they call them, old Rockford clutches. Uh, hand clutches so uh, anyways they had one next day aired in got here this morning and I told him I said as soon as you get it let me know I'll drop what I'm doing and I'll head down there and we'll get it changed out well pretty sure this is it I smell burnt clutch It's got a little John Deere engine here. A little 4045 running a gear head. What do they got just to probably had to do this for OSHA? Oh I see. Yeah, that's pretty smart. Just to yeah. Just a truck drive line. I'll just unhook that. That shouldn't be too bad. to do a lot of stuff like this when I was in the strawberry nursery business there or, or being a mechanic for them I used to make all kinds of stuff like this all the time fabricating pump stations and building stuff like this all the time I used to do all this all this pump manifold work I built all my own 45s and 90s you know I bought the flanges and I bought the reducers and but I could make the T's and and uh, and all that stuff all the eccentric reducers that came into the which they didn't put an eccentric reducer in that. That's a concentric reducer, not an eccentric. If usually when you come out of a pump, you want a, especially a booster, a turbine. It's not as bad, but um, usually if you come out of a, a booster pump, you want to put an eccentric reducer in there to come out instead of a concentric reducer. Well, so I guess what we'll do should have a one-way valve in this so where it'll turn one way yep and lock up the other way a little bit of variety on this channel huh guys hey guys don't run off too far how many of these channels you get to see this kind of stuff not bragging but just you know I like to show a little bit of everything um, 
there's the foundation plot down there see that's how, where they have all their different varieties those are all the plants that will be trimmed and they'll be planted for the actual main crop next season so this 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 stuff is very very important to the grower very important let's pop this out and then it's got a couple allens here let's get with it now we're going to try the half inch drive with the uh, wobble socket Just can't get on them right. Hmm. There I got on. A D7. Got to talking to the guy that used to run it some more and told him what I found and where the leak was. And he said, eh. He said, the converter was getting hot, Warren. I said, he said, I do remember it was getting hot on us. Which, if the converter was getting hot, that's usually an indication that either the scavenge pump isn't working. Okay, so the scavenge pump on that cat, what you got is there's a certain amount of leak off in, in, internally for lube lubrication oil. The transmission pump is supplying pressurized oil to the converter. Okay, so. There's a certain amount of oil that's going to leak back into the housing that has to be pumped back into the final drive housing. And there's a scavenge pump mounted on the back of the converter housing that does that. So one of the possible causes is, is a bad scavenge pump that's not pumping the oil back into the, back into the uh, uh, conver uh, final drive housing. Okay, and another possible cause is there's an inlet screen in there too for the pump that could be restricted or plugged up another possible cause is is the vent the vent on the final draw or the converter housing could be plugged up another possible cause which is this is what i'm more see now i've i've had one of these do this and i've had one well not exactly like this one i had one one time on a d7g that was pushing oil out the starter hole this one's not doing that unless this one's really good and sealed up i'm kind of wondering about that but there's a test a guy can do there's another possible cause okay there's the, the internal there's some sealing rings on the shaft in there those could be leaking and causing so much oil that the cat scavenge pump can't keep up with it and then there's so many possible causes um one of the other possible causes of that problem could be uh, oh come on stay steel yeah it's just not gonna let me get on it did you see what that glove did it got wrapped it Took my damn hand off but anyway uh <laughs> that was weird there's a converter outlet okay so the oil the oil has to come out there's a converter outlet relief valve and there's also a converter regulator valve too so the regulator valve could be sticking uh, the relief valve could be sticking as well daisy get out of them hey guys daisy Get out of there. Come on. Get out of the mud hole. Come on, guys. 
I don't know if you guys should even be drinking that. I mean, they got fertilizer and everything around here. I don't even know if that's a good idea, guys. Be drinking that nasty shit. So there's a lot of things there, but what a guy can do. What a guy can do on that is do what they call a stall test. Put it in like high gear and then just hold both brakes and just hold her wide open for about 10, 15 seconds. Don't go too long, you'll get things too hot. And then, and then uh, get underneath it and drain the converter housing. Just shut it off. Don't even idle it down. Just shut it off. And then get under there and drain the converter housing. And usually you should have about two gallons of oil there. And if you get about five gallons of oil out of there, then you know you've got a, you've got a problem of the, the converter housing getting too full of oil. And if if I don't see any evidence of the starter hole getting wet, then I'm gonna be, I'm gonna think more along the lines, which you can pull the scavenge pump without pulling the converter. So we'll probably wind up pulling it first. Damn, this is a greasy, nasty, greasy, nasty job here. Yeah, at least you can say at least they grease your stuff. If we even need to pull that other end off. Okay. We can just. I wonder if we can just lay this. Well, I don't know. It's probably going to be easier if we just pull the whole thing off and get it out of the way. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be the easiest route to go. I'm definitely going to need an inch for this end. It's a narrower end than that end is. So, if you get like five gallons out of that hole when you drain it, then you know you've got a problem. So the first thing we can do is pull, I uh, have to drop the, the belly pan, which it needs to be cleaned out anyway. I'm just gonna do that. I, you know, if I'm gonna try to flip a piece of equipment and sell it to a guy, especially, you know, it doesn't matter if you know him or not, but I don't, I, my name's on it. I want it to be the best that I can make it within reason, you know, if they come and get it. So I want it working, I want things to be right. So we'll pull the belly pan, might even pull the nose, the, the pan there underneath the engine too, clean it all out. Any noticeable leaks, fix them. Try to get that thing kind of tip top. If uh, Dustin wants to come and get it, I gotta get the C frame. I found the C frame laying in the bushes. Oh, you're just gonna fight me every step of the way, aren't you? clutch in there makes it nice pulling these bolts out I don't know when I got to get back to it I got a 3155 that I was making a video on too that's got low charge pressure that I got to get done and it looks like so far here I'm gonna wind up splitting the tractor in half to get it fixed not going to be something easy, it doesn't look like. I remember that. This is the area, if you guys watched that one video, I was telling you about the Rottweiler. Getting into that newer 8000 Series John Deere and tearing the wiring harness up. It was down here where that happened. Man, that, guy, that dog tore that 
tore that up, man. Seems like sure guys sure watch the cat stuff and they do more of the John Deere stuff and things like that. But, you know, I guess, you know, I was talking to Jim, they're a PA and he worked in the construction industry, well, or construction equipment, you know, for a long time in his career. And he said, there's just more of that out there. He said, half the people don't even know what a John Deere ag tractor is, you know, and I think a lot of people envision that a farm tractor is a farm a farm tractor is just some you know they they envision some old farm all out there with a uh, single steer tire on it and tricycle front end and there that's what their envision of a farmer is but in reality to be completely honest with you I work on the 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 construction you know cats and stuff like that and trucks and and to me to be honest with you the ag tractors are more complicated now than the construction equipment is I mean, they're pretty complex with GPS auto steer systems on them, uh, radar. Uh, I mean, most of these cats and stuff have three speed power shift transmissions where a damn ag tractor can go up to an 18 piece power shift or an IVT transmission. So to me, they're just, they're even more complex than most of the construction stuff is. When I see a, I'm not trying to float my boat or anything, but when I see a three speed power shift, I think, well, that's pretty simple. <laughs> I'm used to working on 15s, 16s, 18s. I see like a Clark four speed power shift and a back on going, ah, oh, this is easy money here. Way less stuff to figure out, I'll tell you that much. Or, you know, just to deal with. Okay. We'll just lay her back in here and that's kind of got, got her out of her way. Let me. Wipe my greasy mitts off. Before I grab my camera. Man, she's a nasty one.
Twin disc. Twin disc, huh? Well, I don't think this one's... Uh, I hope they got the right one. Because I don't think the other one's a twin disc. I don't think it is. Hopefully there's not more than one pump and I'm pulling more than one apart. to me being the thorn on my side yeah I tell you what grease on these doesn't mix it tries to wrap your hand up in the impact wrench go back to doing what I've always done don't put them on. With that one for certain. Having problems with that one. Okay, it's got some force and screws here or holes. It's coming off. Yeah, I think it's pretty well done for. Okay, now yeah, there's the disc. They should have been able to adjust this up though. Yeah, there's a... I know what people are thinking. A lot of those are made like that. We'll have to look at the new one, but this ring here, we gotta get this ring out. Come with a new one of those. Let's get the new clutch out. Make sure everything's same, same. Be the same here as well. I got a new pilot bearing somewhere. See here, they're made like that in sections. The clutch disc is. Are the numbers the same? Model C110 HP4. Model C110 HP4. Serial number, how about this number here? CX110 be 104 or 401. 401, okay. Well, let's get this off of here. Get 
with that big key, that big key off the other shaft. I don't want to mix those bolts up. Directional. Wait, maybe it is. Is there chamfered teeth on it or something? Oh, there's a book in there. I'm gonna get that book out and read it real quick. Make sure I'm doing this right. I want to do it one time. Well, it's pretty straightforward, really. slip too much it doesn't matter how much you adjust it and how tight you get it if it gets heat glazed and it's just it's just not gonna hold it'll just keep slipping he said they adjusted it so some of this crap out of here. I wish it already did that. Of garbage getting down in the teeth there on the new one. Yeah, burnt clutch, you gotta love it. Okay. Cleaner's kind of in the way. <sighs> okay, we shouldn't really go anywhere now. Yeah, a little longer bolt would be really nice.
get a little more paint on it. And then put them back on. Okay. I think pilot bearings what's kind of holding me up. Push it to engage it. Is it engaged right now? There it goes. There we go. Okay. It's really a good idea not to just grab bolts and start forcing it in there. Make sure it pops in. Or you will regret it. I had a buddy do it. He's kind of impatient. I seen a guy do that one time in the truck shop with him. Oh, he was a kid from actually down here. And he came up to climb us to work for a while in the truck shop I was working in, and he, you know his pilot bearing wasn't lined up. And he grabbed an impact on the 5 h bolts on an 18 speed and just sucked it in, broke the bell housing. He didn't work there any longer after that. missing a bolt over here for that part of it already what's this feel like Already adjusted. It's already adjusted. You want them to cam over and lock in real good. Okay, I gotta get this kind of in the right position here. Tighten that up. Now you wonder if these if he was getting on his guys and telling them to grease stuff and they over greased it when you see that amount of grease 
laying down there on the ground but and maybe that might have caused her to slip too and it never would grab again okay i'm gonna explain to you so i'm sure i'm gonna be asked um this is a turbine okay it's a vertical a, tur a booster pump if you had it boosted you would have another pump out here okay and what a booster pump we used to, it takes so many horsepower to pull the water out of the ground and it takes another amount of horsepower to push it to the main line but i can tell what he did he was thinking he was thinking pretty good on this one he put it up on top of the hill and that way he's going down in that hole and once he once he pulls it out of the ground there it's he's using gravity that's a lot that's a pretty good setup really that way you don't have to boost it so much to get the pressure out there so anyway these have a one-way clutch in them okay there's a set of bowls down in there in the bottom okay uh there's a shaft that comes clear up and the impeller and all that stuff's down there where the bowls are okay so what happens is when you turn this pump off most of the time if these pumps don't have a one-way clutch in them the old style pumps didn't have a one-way clutch didn't exist uh, so what happens is you get that column of water up on top so what happens as soon as you shut the power off you turn the pump off that water starts draining back down and what it does it starts turning that impeller backwards and the shaft backwards draining back down the casing and back down the hole back into wherever it's going in the aquifer and it starts turning that shaft backwards and i've seen it done a hundred times especially with hired hands they'll shut the power off or the power will go off and they'll just go back over there and hit the start button right away trying to turn the pump back on while that shaft's turning backwards and what happens is it'll either break the shaft or it'll spin the bowls off to where they fall down in the bottom of the well and then you're talking into 20 30 it depends on how deep the hole is you could be a hundred thousand dollars trying to fix it again so that one-way clutch stops that shaft from turning backwards so you can hit this button again and start it again which if you hear the water going usually what it does on these it just won't do it you won't you'll hear the water but you it won't spin that pump backwards so i thought i would explain that okay. well we got a horse fly over here bothering me now so is that clutch? I'm going to lock the clutch up. That way I can tighten these up. I used to do a lot of this irrigation stuff. A lot of it when I worked for the nurseries. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the pump, the pipe fabrication and, and doing things like that. I really enjoyed that. Because it was just kind of a breakup of the monotonous, just same old, you know, always turning wrenches. Can't get on that thing very well. That clutch is not very tight because I'm spinning it. And I'm on turning the whole engine, ain't I? Trying to see if the... I'm turning the whole engine. That would be what's going on there. Yeah, the, the clutch is holding on, spinning the whole engine over. That's what's going on. <laughs> How's it going? Man, that clutch pops in pretty tight. It ought to be grabbing. It is. Well, yeah, this is boring. You don't want to see me sitting here tightening these darn things up. Well, we're going to fire this thing up. Um, I want to make sure that we're not deadheading stuff here. Is this open or closed? Arrows pointing to open. Let's go look at that. Actually, let's turn on the oil. This is what they call an oil. Oil lubricated shaft on these. Um... this and they got it off okay but it needs to turn that on get it dripping you just want to drip see the sight glass right there 
And there's such a thing as a water lube pump that it uses packing like a, a booster most of the boosters that are they set horizontal and they'll use packing in there on a packing gland that you'll have to adjust every now and then to lubricate the shaft this is an oil drip turbine oil okay let's make sure this one here's open and I can start this girl where is the open there's the arrow okay okay let's fire this thing up the switch in it not sure how the switch originally activated to be honest with you because I didn't break it Push that up once the water gets up here. or something off that one. And a hole there. Yeah, they got a pretty good hole they need to fix there.
could fix that. Yeah, I don't know what they got going on down there, but I didn't ever see any water come out down there. I called him and asked him. He said, yeah, it should be ready to go. Just turn it on. It doesn't appear that it is. I think they got a cap pulled off here for some reason. Can't... You got way too many air vents on this thing. You don't need that many on there. I mean, hell, you got a great big... Shoot, that's got to be a five or six inch one. Then, then you got another one on the other side of the check valve. This is a check valve to keep the water that gets built up in here from running back down the hole. Well, anyways, I'm going to call this one good enough, so I can't do much else with it.